Hello my friends! I am so excited to be sharing my new passion regarding health today with you. As most of you already know, I am kind of a health nerd. I have always been passionate about health. That's why one of the reasons I've been a yoga teacher since 16 years and always been exploring different types of diets and you know, really trying to figure out how to support my body. I present on this channel, as you know, many techniques to take care of your pelvic floor. Taking care of your pelvic floor will also have a spillover effect on your overall health. The thing is, when I was symptom free for a stable amount of time uh, in my pelvic floor, I didn't feel any type of prolapsing, I didn't feel any hemorrhoids, I didn't feel any queefing, you know, I, I really felt so inspired by the body's capability of healing, healing itself. And, you know, I was finally stable, I was finally in a situation which I had dreamed for, for over two years over five years actually. And then I came across something called quantum healing or quantum health, which is basically how to, to support your health, your body, but also your mind and spirit in a way. But if you support the body to become its strongest, you will also have a strong mind and a strong spirit. So quantum health is about strengthening the smallest part of ourselves. So it's about strengthening and giving life force into each and every single cell in the body. The key function in every cell is called mitochondria. So mitochondria exists in every cell. It doesn't matter if it's a skin cell, a muscle cell, an organ cell, whatever it is. The thing with mitochondria is they all love the same thing. So I had heard about many things that comes into the quantum health space, which is earthing, grounding, EMFs, uh, non-native EMFs, also hydration, you know, that's so important for the fascia, circadian rhythm. Uh, it, ha it had all like crossed my awareness, but when I was presented to it as this concept, it all made so much sense. So I happened to stumble over uh, Sarah Kleiner Wellness. Uh, I love her account. I love her story. If you want to go check her out, uh, I'll post the link here and down below. So when I came across her account, I was really intrigued to start to implement these strategies for my health. And it all stemmed from having a healthy pelvic floor. That's always my focus, like still with this quantum health. And if even if I don't have any symptoms, like I really want to still take care of this area. I still do hyperpressives and belly dance and vaginal steaming and all of this. But I also want to take care of my overall health now. So I'm still a bit focused on pelvic floor with the old, for me, strategies. But then I am also implementing these new strategies with a slight focus on the pelvic floor, but also with the overall health. So one thing that happened when I became a mother was that my energy levels dropped completely. I was so depleted all the time since becoming a mother the first time, and then also, of course, the second time. And these quantum health strategies has really given me my energy levels back. It's amazing. Also, what happened after both my pregnancies was that I had irregular periods with also spottings. You know, my menstrual cycle has not really been the same after the pregnancies. But now it is, it's super regular. It's like old times, you know, it's clear blood. I don't have a lot of clots and stuff like that. So 
I can really see in my overall health that all of these strategies has a great effect on my health. So today I am going to present five of my top quantum health healing tools that are simply amazing. Most of them are free, some are not. So I am going to start with the number one red light therapy. When I heard about this, I'm like, yeah, okay, like sitting in front of a red light, how much is like, really, is that really a thing? And then I fell on my cycle, I broke my arm, and I was like, okay, if I am at all going to try this, I should try it now. Because when I looked for like healing, alternative healing support things to do for a broken arm, one of them was red light because it has uh, an effect to heal bones. So I tried and actually from the day I implemented red light, the healing journey went so much faster. And I don't know if that's a coincidence. Like it, I think about two weeks had passed from when I broke my arm up until when I got the red light, I ordered it. It took some time for it to come and so on. So two weeks passed and I started two weeks after I fell with like an exponential effect. Anyway, I continued to do red light. I bought a bigger panel. I love my panel and I have actually put it in my sauna. So now I am doing it three to four times every week and on different parts of the body. So I kind of cover my whole body. I do it for 30 minutes, three or four times every week. and. I have so much more energy. So from the day I became a mother, I've always had to sleep in the afternoon. Not for a long time. I usually what I do is uh, a yoga nidra. I kind of fall asleep for a few seconds or minutes. I wake up and that's it. So it's like a super short effective nap, which in a way I love, but it's also very limiting to be dependent on that type of sleep in the afternoon, especially since I have started to work and, you know, the kids have their activities in the afternoon and all of that. So I just felt so tired all the time to have to take these naps in the afternoon. And I was like, okay, finally, like in five or 10 years, maybe I won't need to take this nap anymore because I'm not like having small kids anymore. But then red light came into my life. And if I have had a bad night's sleep, which rarely happens anymore, I mean, not as much as when the kids were young, it still happens. If I have a bad night of sleep, a bad night of sleep, I just do red light for 30 minutes and I have as much energy as if I would have slept eight hours, which is amazing. Like, Oh, why didn't I have this tool when I had like a baby? Because my sleep was crap. So red light is just, I can really feel the effect in my mitochondria from using this on a regular ba basis. So that's number one. Number two, circadian rhythm. And there are lots to say about circadian rhythm and many people are talking about that. So I think, you know, for you to really discover what would make sense for you, uh, you can go ahead and search more. My kind of takeaways from circadian rhythm are three things. First of all, look at the sunrise. So whenever the sun is like at an, a 10 degree angle toward you, you should go outside with the naked eyes and just spend, if you can spend two minutes, that's like at least what you need. You could maybe spend five minutes or 10 minutes, 20 minutes is great. So that's usually what I do actually. I spend 20 minutes outside in the morning. It really shifts, that too shifts my energy levels. I'm much more clear in my head if I do that in the morning. So that's a really simple one. The next one is to block out blue light, especially in the evening but also maybe like during daytime and there are blue blockers. The simplest thing I think is to just change uh, the color on your screen to red and you will block out the blue light and you don't need to wear it like the specs all the time. 
so that's another trick uh, but especially like one hour before bedtime i always make sure that i don't have any blue light thirdly is to think about how much you eat and when you eat so what i'm trying and i am not perfect at all when i nail it i feel the difference so i try to eat my biggest largest meal in the morning with a lot of protein and then lunch time will be slightly smaller but i think for me they are kind of the same size most of the times and then a small meal for dinner and i like if i just have like soup made of bone broth and just some vegetables inside or something that's when i sleep the best and i wake up with so much energy and again there are so much more to learn about circadian rhythm so if you're interested just go and look it up then what we have is emfs and if you haven't heard about non-native emfs before it's uh, radiation so emfs are radiation and we are getting natural radiation from the sun from the earth and you know there are these natural radiations that are great for us there are also these non-native emfs that are coming from all the electronic devices that we have everywhere so what i'm trying to do now is just unplugging the wi-fi and um, making sure all cell phones are uh, like off not just on air airplane mode but also off my husband loves tech <laughs> so we had such a smart home and when i realized this about the emfs i was like okay let's change the fire alarm let's change the cameras we're slowly like shifting from away from all of that to to decrease the, really, the non-native EMFs. Fourth on my list is grounding. And I have always loved to walk barefoot, to go swim in the ocean, but it really became a part of my protocol in a different way. So how I spend the first 20 minutes outside is actually going for a walk when the sun is rising and I'm usually barefoot. So I'm grounding, I'm getting that sunrise light, and I'm also moving, which the fascia and the mitochondria likes in that way. So that's another free tool, and you need about two minutes to ground yourself. You can go anywhere where, where there is not only earth, uh, like earthing, um, you can do it on asphalt, you can do it in the water. Water is like the best grounding opportunity. Grass, uh, all of these, like if, if there's a mountain or stones, like you can ground whenever you are in contact with the earth. You can even hold like a plant outside. Uh, so yeah, that also gives, gives much higher energy levels and also healing capabilities into the body. And the last thing for today that I want to mention here is hydration. I already like I live in Sweden, the water is super clean here, but I all, anyway have like this filter installed. So here people drink tap water because it's so clean uh, and there are no issues. But of course there are. So I have a filter, I use filtered water. And then what I do in the morning is to add some salt. I've been living so many years like having this hot lemon water in the morning and then i realized that you know there are no lemons here where i live in sweden not even in the summer so that is probably going to create some confusion for my body like why is this coming into the body when the the sunlight is not at all as strong uh, as this like food or what i am digesting is telling me so instead i have been uh, buying celtic sea salt that's supposed to be like the cleanest salt uh, and i add it into my water in the morning and i drink like a really big glass and there are like some quantities that you should consider like how much salt and how much water 
I just do it like on intuition. <laughs> And always when I take a sauna, I have lots of salt water because you're sweating so much and stuff like that. And, and this is, of course, for like the whole system, but also for the fascia. The fascia really loves hydration. And since I started this, my heels, they had like small cracks. I'm not sure what that is called in English, but they had like small cracks on the backside. I think it's quite common and those just disappeared. So that's my five top things uh, regarding quantum health for today. If you want to learn more about this and more specifically about the pelvic floor and quantum health and healing, I'd love to share more. Make sure that you go check out Sarah Kleiner Wellness and learn more and just search YouTube. There are so many amazing creators on this topic and it's growing. It's growing hugely. So good luck and goodbye.